the Senate Judiciary Committee is expected to vote next week on whether or not to confirm Judge Brett Kavanaugh to the Supreme Court. We go to Senator Chuck Grassley of Iowa, the chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee. Senator, welcome to the show. I'm glad to be with you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. First off, how do you think your committee will vote next week on Judge Kavanaugh? Based upon the questions that were asked for the two days that Kavanaugh showed his uh, true abilities to be on the Supreme Court, I expect the vote's going to be 11 to 10. Uh, we'll have the debate in committee and the vote, uh, which I presume will be 11 to 10, uh, on September the 20th. Good to know. And the hearings did get pretty rowdy at times. Senator, Judge Kavanaugh's children couldn't even be in the room. What do you make of all the disruption, particularly from Planned Parenthood and Women's March activists? Well, I believe that uh, you look at what went on, and I think maybe the people that were raising the questions and, and a lot of the uh, showboating that went on, that they showed that they didn't lay a hand on Kavanaugh. So during Wednesdays and Thursdays, there was about 26, 27 hours that Kavanaugh was before the American people, mm -hmm. and they found a person that was truly going to do what a justice of the Supreme Court ought to do, leave their personal views out of it. They aren't going to be a policymaker. They're going to interpret the law the way Congress passed it, uh, base their decision on the facts of the case and the law or the Constitution, and leave their own personal views out. And that's what everybody expects of a justice. So uh, he showed that he is, uh, well, you know, some people say he has a reputation for being a judge's judge. In other words, like a mentor to other people. Uh, he showed what mentoring quali qualities he has, uh, being a teacher. Uh, well, he's also been a professor of the law. So I think that his high qualifications are going to uh, make certain his approval by the United States Senate. For our viewers, Senator, can you give more context about how judicial nominees talk about cases that might come before the Supreme Court, and particularly for the sake of our viewers, cases that involve Roe v. Wade? Okay, well, I think he made very clear that following uh, what the justice the Supreme Court always does in almost every area. There's sometimes that they overturn what you call precedent, but the longer the precedent's been there, the more apt it is to hold. And then there's a second opinion dealing with Roe v. Wade that, uh, that would indicate that it's, uh, it, it's pretty uh, much uh, a precedent of the Supreme Court that's going to be difficult to change. But I think what, you, what he's trying to say in this environment is that, uh, that there's a certain amount of leeway within Roe v. Wade and the way the courts have interpreted it now. And there's areas where states can legislate uh, certain areas within the Roe v. Wade issue. Uh, and uh, so uh, uh, you, you can have 50 different states approaching the issue within their, uh, uh, what they can do under the Constitution in different ways. And he would not say to anybody, and he shouldn't say to anybody, how he would rule on some case that might come up 10 years down the road or even 10 months down the road. Because you got to look at that case separately from anything else and, uh, and judge it by what the Constitution requires. And that's what he's going to do. And that's, what, uh, 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 that's why the people that were trying to catch him on Roe v. Wade, that he might uh, uh, be absolutely opposed to it, uh, he took the Ginsburg standard. Mm -hmm. And remember, Justice Ginsburg said uh, in 1993 when she was there, when somebody said, well, how are you going to rule in this area or that area? She says there's not going to be any predictions, uh, any hints. Uh, there's not going to be anything that I'm going to tell you how I might rule 10 years down the road because I don't know what the facts of the case mm -hmm. are. And then Justice uh, uh, Kagan, about six or seven years ago, uh, when she was before our committee, uh, said it a little bit different way, but took the p point of view. It would be wrong for a person who's supposed to give impartial justice 
uh, and make a judgment uh, that, that you were going to be anything other than the law and the facts. That is very important context. Thank you, Senator. My last question to you is, what would you say to your Democratic colleagues from red states about Kavanaugh ahead of the vote? Yeah, they ought to be voting for him, and they shouldn't be listening to their leader, who has been uh, pounded by a lot of more liberal people than evidently Schumer is, and I didn't know they existed, but they said if you can't keep all 49 votes together, then you shouldn't be leader of the Democratic caucus. And the way I see it is we're elected by the people of our particular state, Iowa in my case, but wherever else they're elected, either in a red or blue state, they ought to be representing the people of their state. And I would expect in most of these red states that people find Kavanaugh very favorable to be on the Supreme Court, so they'd be making a very dra dramatic mistake by voting against him. Senator Chuck Grassley of Iowa, thank you for your time. Thank you.